Hey, what's up guys? John Stacecull here. Welcome back to another Game Dev video. So today I want to talk to you about layers in Unity. Now it's a bit of a complex topic for beginners because layers can be used in many different critical ways. And they're not to be mistaken with um, layers in Photoshop or Illustrator or other kind of uh, vi video or graphic editing software which share the same layers name. It's very different. So let's start by looking at how we actually create a layer. So to do that, I'm just going to jump over to Unity here. And there's two ways we can create new layers. We can start by clicking an object. Here I've got the ground. And with the layer um, drop down here, we can select Add Layer. And we can add it here like so. The other way is to um, go directly into this Layers drop down in the top of the Unity IDE and click Edit Layers. And from here, under the Layers drop down, we have these empty slots. So it's in these empty slots here that we want to create some new layers. So I'll go ahead and do that. We'll create one called background, uh, another one called player, another one called ground. So after you've done that, you then have to actually click on the objects that you want and assign those layers. See, you can see these new created layers here. Now there are some default layers here that Unity has created as part of the Unity engine. So let's assign background to background, uh, make our player a player layer, and we'll make it ground for the ground. Okay, so now I'm gonna get into the reasons as to why you want to use them, or rather why you have to use them, because they are, like I said, a critical part of the Unity workflow. So the first purpose is workflow optimization. I can go into this um, layers dropdown, and from here, I can toggle the visibility of different layers. And you can even lock the layer, so that way you don't accidentally click on things you don't want to be clicking on. Now you can see I actually do something very similar in my own game Blood and Mead, where I have um, a terrain layer. I've got um, well, I've got a lot of layers actually, so don't be distracted by those. But I've definitely got a background layer. So turning off the background is one very nice way uh, to work. And I also like to um, lock this terrain layer, so I don't accidentally move my terrain pieces around. That can be quite annoying. All right, so purpose number two, collision. Now, collisions in Unity are directly linked to the layers, so there is a direct tie between them. Now, if you go into your Unity IDE, under the Edit menu, under Project Settings, you'll have uh, various options, and under Physics, or Physics 2D, you'll have this collision matrix, layer collision matrix. Now, this has all the different layers in your scene listed and it makes a cross-check as to what layers you want to collide with other layers. By default, it turns it all on. So what you want to do, you want to kind of customize this to suit your game. So you have different collisions, like for example, the player, I want to collide with the ground. So I've clicked this box here. I don't want the UI to collide with the ground or the player to collide with the UI. So it's a little bit of a clumsy system that they've set up here, but it does kind of work. It would be good if they added like a um, deselect all button, because you, you can, depending on how big your collision matrix is, you can end up spending a lot of time toggling these. Um, I'll just jump into, over to my own game to show you the, the chaos. <laughs> well, organized chaos, as I put it. And you can see here I have a very finely calibrated collision matrix. Now what this does is, it actually improves the performance of the game because there's no collision redundancy. I'm not having layers being considered for collision against unrelated, unnecessary layers. It's only looking at collisions between layers that I have deemed are worthy of some kind of interaction. So the third core purpose is the camera and rendering system. Now, in Unity, you can tell the camera what it should render. So in this scene here, if I click on the main camera and look at the property inspector, you'll see there's a value called culling mask. So this is the value which determines what we want to show. And you can see by default, Unity has set it to everything. It's got the list of all the layers. So if I just um, set that to nothing, and you can see here in the camera preview, 
that now it's not showing anything. So from here now, we can actually fine tune what we want to show the player. Background, um, the ground, and of course the player. And then we can kind of mix and match and find um, various other options. In my own game, I have several cameras that are rendering different components of the scene. I have one camera which renders just the background, another camera which renders just the foreground, and another camera which renders just the play space. So you can see here on my main camera, I've got an orthographic camera, a perspective foreground camera, and the main camera, which is also a perspective camera. So you can see here, this main camera is only rendering the background. Okay, this orthographic camera is rendering all the stuff on the action level of the game. And this foreground camera is only rendering the foreground assets. And if I click on those foreground assets, you'll see this foreground plant is set to the foreground layer. Very useful, very powerful, very efficient. So the fourth way in which the layers are useful is for actual code. And you might see often layers being used in this bitwise um, layer mask fashion to check for ground. This is particularly um, prevalent when um, using a line casting or ray casting, where the ray will look for a particular layer to intersect to check if it has made contact with an object on a particular layer. So another important thing to note, there are only 32 layers in total at your disposal, eight of which are being used up by Unity. They've reserved those layers for like future updates and things like that. So you have to be very um, careful with how you manage your layers. Now in my own game, I've already maxed out the, the layers and I'm often revising my code implementations to work with that limit. So why 32? Well, behind the scenes, Unity is using an integer to store the layer mask. And an integer only has 32 bits of storage space. So as a result, we get 32 layers. So we have to work within that limitation. So I hope you found this video useful. This video was actually requested by Patreon supporter Gravius. So thanks for the request. I hope this video has found you well and answered some of your questions on the topic. If any of you would like to become Patreon supporters and help support this channel, I'll put a link down below. All right, guys, don't forget to hit that like button, hit the sub, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.